Hi, my name is Brian, and if you're watching this video and you know me, you probably already know I love my keyboard shortcuts and macros. I'm obsessed with them. And in these crazy times, being self-quarantined, practicing social distancing, I find that I tend to be a little more lazy than usual. And so I thought, what better way to deal with my laziness than to lean into it rather than fight it and find a bunch of cool macros to do stuff for me instead of me having to do them. And so I thought I'll show you five of my favorite macros and maybe give you ideas for macros of your own or maybe just get you excited about introducing automation and macros into your own setup. And as you'll see, not all of those are going to be music related. And so if you have someone in your life that you care about and you think they could use some automation in their life, maybe share this video with them and give them the gift of productive laziness, if you will. A couple notes before we dive into the macros. One, I'm not going to cover how to actually set these macros up. This is going to be a separate video. The second note is this is probably going to be relevant for Mac users way more than Windows users because I am using Keyboard Maestro for most of them and Keyboard Maestro is uh, Mac only software. So sorry, Windows users. Anyways, let's dive in and check out a bunch of cool macros. So the first macro isn't technically a macro, but it's super useful and I use it all the time. So if you're like me, you probably have multiple Gmail accounts. I have one for uh, work, one for personal stuff, one just for family. Look, they're free. You can have as many as you want. And it's really effective to have certain subjects separated into different Gmail accounts. And so if you have multiple Gmail accounts, you probably know the struggle of going into your Gmail account and it's not the right one. You have to click this right top right uh, button and go into the actual Gmail account that you wanted to go to. And then it's two tabs. So you have to close the one and it's so not effective. And so I found that if you're using this address followed by your Gmail account, obviously not this one. However, that is a cool Gmail account. And I wonder if someone has it. But if you're using your own Gmail account and as long, sorry about that. Um, as long as you don't have to input your password every time that you want to log into it, as it's already signed in, um, then it will go directly into your Gmail account. And so I have them set up in my Stream Deck as separate buttons and just one button click and I go straight into the right Gmail account. So here's Gmail account number one, Gmail account number two, you can tell it's different by the different uh, background, Gmail account number three, it's super effective, it's super useful. And um, if you don't have the Stream Deck, you can trigger that from Keyboard Maestro with a shortcut. And if you don't have either, you can actually, um, if you're using, you're probably using Chrome and not Firefox, which is fine, but as long as you're using the bookmarks bar, which you should, you can right click and then hit new bookmark and then call it work Gmail um, and then just paste this address, which you'll have in the comments uh, in the description below, followed by um, whatever Gmail account, and then it'll just be here, and yeah, it'll work. It's super simple, it's super useful. Macro number two might look really specific, but you can really change it to suit your situation, and this one goes beyond music, and it doesn't have to be related to music. In my situation, yes, it is. You'll see in a second. So I compose music for TV shows, and I work with different clients and each client has their own file naming system for folders and files that I have to upload to their servers and it has to be consistent through each episode and throughout the whole process and it's really hard to keep track of how they want the file name to be formatted. And so I have a cool macro that when I launch it opens up this prompt for me. And this is using variables in Keyboard Maestro, which are super useful and super awesome. You can use them for things that aren't just this kind of form, but this is definitely one of the best use cases for variables in Keyboard Maestro. And so you can see, I can put all of the information that is relevant to the file name. So season, episode, queue number, queue name, queue version, time code. You can, you can have them be whatever you want them to be. And then I have a format kind. So if I'm just sending an MP3 file, if it's a stem or a folder or a final mix, 
uh, this is my use case. This is what I'm using. So if I choose folder, it will put the relevant information, not all of it, but the relevant information in the way that I want it to be in the name. So if I hit OK, then it copied it into my clipboard. And now when I hit paste, you can see NGS. That was not in the prompt. This is actually in the macro. This is set up in the macro. NGS is the abbreviation for the TV show that I'm working on, followed by space. Uh, season number, space, episode number, underscore, Q number, underscore, Q name. That's for the folder. If I go and do, let's go to mix, which is the final version and paste it. Now it's completely different, but with the relevant information. So NJ5, which is, a sh it's not NJS now. Now it's just NJ followed by the episode number, underscore Q number, underscore Q name, space version three. Uh, v was not in the prompt as well. This is just the format and it's using the information in the format that I wanted to at time code. Now, if I go into the prompt, and uh, change the time code or the ver let's do version five. And sh I mean, you wouldn't change the time code for the same queue, but just for uh, this purpose. And let's go stem, then now it's completely different. So NJ5 and then the queue number, queue name, V5, and then the stem can be strings. For example, if I go again, for two mix with more information, you can see the time code was changed. And whenever I change it, it remembers the last information that I put in. It took a lot of time to set this up, actually. I'll show you how to do it in the next video, but this saved me countless of many errors when you're exporting a lot of stems and you're dealing with a lot of file naming system and each client has different formats that you need to remember and go to the cheat sheet. And it's just, it eliminates the human error factor out of it. And I highly recommend trying to recreate something like this in your own setup. Right, macro number three. Again, might look a little bit like a niche based on my setup, which it is because I set it up to fit my setup, but you can change it to fit your own. And again, it's just about showing you what is possible, giving you ideas of things like, hey, this can make my life a little bit easier. So in my setup, you can not see that, but I have three monitors, two on the bottom and one on the top. And so in my line of work, I sit for most of the day, which is not really healthy, but unfortunately I can't have a sit stand desk because I can't lift my whole setup. There's too many cables and I can't lift my monitors up because I don't think a stand like that exists. It's a whole nightmare. So fortunately I have a third monitor, which is higher than the two that are in my line of sight. And so let me just pull up my phone. I have a button on my stream deck with a little sit stand icon and when I push it, uh, this is Cubase, this is Video Slave, they will shift and now I can stand and this monitor will be in my line of sight. And I can edit stuff, I can still reach uh, the Avid S1 and my iPad, I can't really play the keyboard, but if I wanna just edit stuff instead of sitting and editing stuff, this is a great way to do that. And then I can also look at the video from the bottom right, then I click the button again and they're back to normal. Uh, it's super useful, it's super easy to set up, and let me just go back to the normal screen. So some ways that you can use this in your own setup is maybe you have a MacBook Pro and an external monitor, which is really common. And you have your mixer in the MacBook Pro because it's a smaller screen, you have your project window in the external monitor. You can have this macro just switch between them so you can mix for a second and not look at the project window, just be focused on the mixing and then switch it back. Maybe you're composing and then you have the video on the MacBook Pro and you wanna just get inspired and see your video for a second on the big screen. So dragging things around, just push the button and do it. And so I strongly encourage you to try and find something that can be useful that is similar to this in your own setup. Macro number four might look really simple and it saves just a little bit of time every time that I use it, but honestly, that's the point of using macros. So I send a lot of MP3 files to clients, but I always export as a WAV file, just so if this is the final version, which I always intend it to be, I don't have to go into Cubase again and export it as WAV file we're trying to save time, right? So the way that I'm converting Wave into MP3 on my Mac is using an app called XLD. Now it doesn't have any interface. Uh, the conversion is not the best, but it's enough for clients to hear it. So what you do is you go to file, open, and then you need to go to the right folder and choose the files that you want to convert. 
it converts it really quick and then you have to close it again you can hit command q if you want a faster way to do it would be to right click and then open with usually it'll be here as a quick menu but it isn't so we need to go to other and then search for xld and then it converts it and it's really fast and then you just need to close it what if we can do it even faster so i have a macro that would see if i'm selecting a wave file and as long as a wave file is selected it will open xld and then convert the files for me wait for it to finish and then quit the app for me so check it out xld converting the two files and waiting it did you miss it hold on let me do this again but this time after it's done converting pay attention to this corner and see how it just quits once more converting top left corner closed it's so freaking simple honestly this is the things that i'm talking about when i'm talking about um macros just let the computer do stuff for you stuff like closing an app when you're done with it especially if it doesn't have any interface to interact with so maybe find the little details in your line of work in your workflow that can be simplified and then free your brain to think of important things meaningful things instead of closing apps that you won't have to do it yourself okay macro number five is the big one this is the one that you've been waiting for it's also the most primitive one as far as keyboard maestro it's not really sophisticated it's not using anything fancy it's just mouse clicks and copy and paste really but it is the most showy one so we're finishing with a bang so in my workflow every time that i finish working on a scene i need to send uh, an audio file and a video file to the client and the way that i do it is using dropbox on my mac and so what's nice using Dropbox on my Mac is that I can um, copy a Dropbox link directly from the Finder. And then using uh, Gmail for web, I like the, um, the text to display to be actually the file name. So it's nice and uh, neat in the email, but then you can go to the Dropbox link by clicking on it. And then I need to do the same for the video. Um, it takes a lot of mouse clicks and mouse drags to do that. And so I set Keyboard Maestro to recognize the constant. If you watched my Keyboard Maestro video, you know that you need to search for constants in your workflow for Keyboard Maestro to recognize because otherwise it can be a catastrophe. But I managed to get this working using Keyboard Maestro and Alfred for Mac, which I highly recommend on you using. Um, I can do something a little like this. Copy Dropbox link, name, okay, we're in video. Copy Dropbox link, name, done. And sign my name, Woo! that's nice. Yeah, um, yeah, you can have your signature there, but I like to add a kind of a personal signature for each client. And this is the one for that specific client. You know who you are. Um, yeah, and this goes to the WAV file, this goes to the video file, it's perfect. It's such a time saver because it's fast, it's, hold on, it's so much faster than the way that I can do it. But then also, again, eliminating the human error. I can tell you how many times I copied the Dropbox link but haven't really pasted it so there was no link or it just saves so much time or so much free time from my mind to do it. Um, these are really simple. These are the things that you can create using Keyword Maestro um, to save you time, to free your mind to do things that you actually need, set it and forget it. It's one button, it's one keystroke. Um, there are countless ways to trigger from Keyboard Maestro to make the macros happen, if you will, and it saves so much time. Yeah. So yeah, these are five of my favorite macros these days. I always add more macros. I always keep an eye on what I can perfect in my workflow, what corners I can cut and make better. 
by eliminating myself and keeping myself relevant to the creative stuff, the thing that Keyboard Maestro can't do yet. Oh my god, this would be a nightmare. It's learning. <laughs> it's not really, no. But yeah, these, these are the things that I'm excited about. Let me know what you think of this new setup because it's, it's new and I like it and it helps me create videos faster. Also, let me know which macros you're using that I'm not using and blow my freaking mind, man. That'll be awesome. Also, drop a like if you want me to make the longer video. I'm gonna make it anyway, but drop a like if you want me to see, uh, you do want me to make the longer video where I break down every macro. Maybe not the first one, because that's, that's just in Gmail link, I mean. But the four macros, yeah, they're, they're good, right? Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I'm losing it in this quarantine life. Um, yeah, and let me know what videos you want me to do next. I hope to create more content in the future and with this setup, maybe more quickly. And as always, stay creative, stay awesome, and stay home <laughs> and wash your hands because damn, man, it's bad. I'll see you in the next one. Woo!